Maista myös aito Amerikan keisari. Keisari 66. Käsin tehty aromikas pintahiiva olut. American style. Hey, it's Alexi for Chill and Bottom and you are watching Chaos TV. First of hello everybody. Chaos TV is today here at Tuska Open Air and we have a guest here, Alexi Laiho from the band Children of Bottom. So first of hello and welcome to Chaos TV once again. Well, thank you very much, sir. So you just played your show here at Tuska. So how did the gig go? I feel fucking great about it, seriously. Because the thing is that, you know, every single time we play in Helsinki, you know, which is our basically our hometown, I, I get the jitters, I, I get anxious, you know. It, it's it, it's a weird thing, you know, but I get fucking nervous. And, uh, you know, whenever I get on the stage, I know that I'm going to be okay. But, like, the crowd was fucking awesome. And, and uh, from my point of view, it was the best Tuskov crowd, like, ever. So you actually had a signing session a few minutes ago and the queue for it was huge. Did you notice it yourself? I heard about it, yeah. I didn't see the whole queue, yeah. but yeah, I heard it that was it was... That huge like, that you didn't yeah, see it. The whole fucking yeah. festival area, yeah. I mean, it's obviously a bummer that we couldn't like sign everybody, but you know, that's just, you know, it's not our fault, obviously. But, but um, yeah, yeah, it was cool though. So, and, you know, the carcass was playing at the same time, too, you know, yeah. so we got good music at the same time as well. So you are you have been supporting the new Halo of Blood album, which has been out for a year now. So generally, have you been pleased with the album and the feedback you have received from it, from the fans and from the media? Oh, uh, yeah, I'm still I'm still actually happy with the album, like no bullshit. Because, I mean, the thing is that usually when I... <laughs> Uh, usually when I listen to the album like six months uh, six months after it's done you know I'm like you know trying to pick up like you know things that I would have done differently but okay. this time around you know I mean uh, I'm definitely more pleased with it than I was with the previous or even the one before so yeah definitely plus the feedbacks being uh, really good from the fans as well and now you can see that when we play live they actually really do dig the new songs so it doesn't feel like that we're actually forced feeling people like new shit yeah. like a lot of bands do I mean obviously we have to play old shit that's what everybody wants to hear but but also you know if we do like three songs from the new album they're actually really psyched to to hear that shit so I mean that feels good to me you know it's the best feeling definitely so how hard it is for you guys to put the new songs into the set list because you have such a long discography already it gets hotter and fucking hotter every year I mean, no, it's just, it's just the way it is, you know, it's just, we got like well, eight studio albums now and um, even when we headline, you know, the, the club shows and whatnot, you know, we, we play like for 85 minutes or even 90 and it's always a fucking pain in the ass because, you know, the thing is that we really do want to uh, play stuff from each album and, and uh, you know, old stuff plus, you know, kind of like mixed in the new stuff as well. So it's not easy. <laughs> I'll tell you that, but you know, I mean, it's it's only gonna get worse and worse. Yeah. But we'll figure it out. So has it also become like physically harder to manage from the tours because you have the set list has gotten, I guess, a, a lot like bigger from the early days. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, from the very early days, yeah, definitely. But you know, it's just. I don't know. It, it, it's it's kind of like a two-way street in a way, because like from the early days, you know, we would do more uh, like support tours where we open up for somebody, so you would play less than an hour. Plus, you're younger. You know, you're like 20 something years old. So I mean, nothing can fucking hurt you. You're like indestructible. <laughs> so you can just like you play your 45 minutes, just rock on, you know, and then you party your ass off and do the same, you know, the same thing next day. But nowadays, it's like you know you have to get out there, you know, and play for nine minutes and you have two beers and then you're gonna fucking hurt the next day so i'm 35 years old now you know i'll tell you man the hangovers they do not get any better It, it's like they get fucking violent so that's why you know i i, I last four days yeah i mean i'm just saying that's why i opted for not not fucking drinking on the on the road like at all pretty much it's like i mean well i can have like a beer or two here and there but that's it Because I don't want to feel like shit on the stage, yeah. like ever again. So, uh, and you know, it's a good thing. It's just something I need to do at the moment. 
but obviously right now it's just a festival and i i can go home i mean i i get to like have a proper hangover day tomorrow yeah. <laughs> so what the fuck so today you are here at tuska so how special is that like this festival for you i mean it's always special i think we did i'm not sure if it was the very first one but i, I mean we've been doing a lot of them yeah. and Plus, you know, it's in Helsinki, so obviously, you know, it, it always has a special meaning yeah. for us. And it's always a challenge, like I was saying earlier, uh, it, it's always a challenge playing in Helsinki. It seems like you gotta work, you gotta work harder. I mean, I always give my 100% no matter what, but you gotta work harder for like the Helsinki crowd. So like, kind of like, you know, make sure that they get into it. Because they're always kind of like, you know, um, let's see if he's going to fuck up or is he going to fuck up or like... Yeah, just kind of watch you playing. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. It's like, well, you got your rock and roll police, you know, yeah. like by the fucking, like the, the mixing board, you know, taking notes and shit. <laughs> I exaggerate a lot, but yeah. But no, like I said, you know, today it was a fucking killer crowd, so I'm not complaining. So the pre like the latest album has been said to be like a step back to your roots so do you plan to follow basically that with with your next album Well no because it was never it was never ne- like meant to be that way it just kind of came out naturally you know and and uh yeah I mean I can, I can see that now I can hear that now that there's definitely a lot of elements from like Follow the Reaper or uh Hey Brader and stuff like that but I mean it was not like anything that we planned on doing I was never like I never picked up the guitar and like okay let me make a fucking Hey Brader riff now you know it just came out plus Plus, uh, I mean, there's a bunch of like new elements in there too, like stuff that we've never done before. So, I mean, it's I, I would say that it's definitely a mixture between old school and just just new shit, which I suppose you know it, it, it's a pretty good thing because. I mean, I know for a fact that, you know, a lot of people, they prefer, like, Follow the Reaper as opposed to, like, Blood Drunk, you know. But, but like I said, Blood Drunk and, and those albums in between, they were just steps for us to go forward and not be stuck, not redo Hey Breeder or, like, not redo fucking Hey Crew Death Roll. Because if you make an awesome album, you know, you don't want to make it twice. I know that a lot of bands have made that, that have made the same mistake and then you get stuck. So might as well just take the risk and try something new, you know. Yeah, but I guess it's it's pretty much the same for every big band i guess everybody's ex- expecting slayer to do like the yeah, raining blood again and metallica do black album black again black. and you have to deal with the fact that you know like whenever you put out a new album the fans especially the diehard fans you know they're probably not gonna like it you know they're like you know fuck dude you know that shit sucks you know what i mean Your demo was the best one yeah, yeah exactly yeah, we're the fuck's morning palace and you know it's like yeah. you know but you know once they get used to it plus it's very important that you go out and you tour your fucking ass off you play that shit live and just kind of show on them that that you know this is awesome you know this stuff, this stuff works so you know that's also what i gotta do yeah has there been like any albums from the year 2014 that has been like somehow special to you that you have been listening to recently you know what dude it's funny that you asked me that question right now because usually when somebody does that i go like you know what I'm sure there has been, but I have no fucking clue right now. However, I've been listening to the new Bud account like fucking 24-7 for the last two weeks. That's a good album. It is fucking awesome. It's so good. And it's funny too. Like, I just listen to the lyrics and I just... Like, whenever I wake up, that's like, you know, I I get up, make my coffee, I put that on. And uh, I just listen to the lyrics and everything. And I just fucking laugh out loud by myself, you know. It's a good album, though, you know. And like something a bit different as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, but don't worry, we're not, we're not gonna make a rap album or anything. <laughs> you know, it's not like that. <laughs> I just get a kick out of it because I love old school shit, like you know, just N.W.A. and like the old Public yeah. Enemy and you know whatever. I I, I hate new hip hop and new rap. I fucking hate that shit. But the old school stuff, though, it's good. Yeah, that reflects that a bit. Well, yeah, I mean, obviously, but, but, you know, like old body count and just like Ice-T in general, he's, he's like legitimate yeah. fucking badass. Yeah. He gets away with like all the lyrics and everything, yeah. you know? Yeah. So thank you very much yeah. for the time and good luck for the future. Uh, anything you want to say as last words to, to the viewers of the TV? Oh, just you can uh, hold the mic and that up there. 
I get to hold the mic. Yeah. All right. Well, KH TV, thank you for everybody for watching this shit and listening to Chill and Bottom, and uh, I'll see you very soon, most likely. Yeah. Thank you. Bye.